Welcome to Indianomics. The Indian government has been lately talking and doing a lot to make the Indian rupee an international currency. One reason is the growing realization that India will soon be the third largest economy probably by the end of this decade. The rupee deserves to be an international currency simply because of this. The bigger reason, however, is a push factor. The sanctions against Russian entities and the impounding of Russian dollar reserves has rattled emerging markets like India who hold dollar reserves and realize that the West can always weaponize the dollar. Thirdly, there is a technology factor. Technology has arrived, so to speak. More central banks uh, uh, may have uh, central bank digital currencies or CBDCs that can be used for bilateral payments without an intervening dollar or euro. Also, it is now possible to connect India's UPI to the payment systems of other countries for small cross-border retail payments. The government and the Reserve Bank have therefore taken some steps to facilitate the rupee's growing role. Reserve Bank has put out a report recommending steps that the country can take to facilitate rupee payment for exports and imports. And the government of India has been signing agreements uh, lately with the UAE and earlier with Malaysia to facilitate local currency usage for trade, invoicing imports and exports in local currencies. Today we are asking what are the advantages of an international role for the rupee? What are the disadvantages, if any? How can we make in the rupee an international currency in the sense of the near term and the medium term steps? For all these questions, I have with me an elite panel, Professor Ardhan Panagaryal, Professor of Economics uh, at Columbia University, Mr. G. Padmanabhan, former Executive Director at the Reserve Bank and responsible for a lot of the payment systems, Heyman Mishra, co-founder of Scoop Capital and in his previous avatar, uh, a very key player in the Indian Forex market. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, well, let me start with you, Mr. Padmanabhan, because you have been there, done that. Uh, so, you know, for starters, do you think we are in a better position now? Or is this still a very distant ambition uh, to, you know, invoice uh, p p payments, exports or imports in uh, the Indian rupee? Uh, <clears throat> good evening, Lata. Happy to be back with your show. Uh, let me start this way. I think invoicing in Indian rupee was something which has, which was always there. I think for several years, invoicing in rupee was always permitted. Uh, to what extent it was happening is a different question because uh, one reason one could uh, easily point out is that nobody who wants, who is a receiver, would want to invoice in a currency which historically has been showing a secular decline. So although the invoicing in rupee through the Vostrokan route was always permissible, even under the Ferrari days, I think the number of transactions that were happening using the rupee was few and far between. Okay. Now, we juxtapose this with the ambition of what we call the internationalization. Now, the internationalization, if it is understood in a classic manner, I think... Uh, this, an international currency means that this is being used beyond the borders by people who are not doing transactions with the respective countries and who are doing transactions among themselves. So, basically, we are talking about a currency just like the U.S. dollar, which gets used between in transactions where U.S. may not be even involved. If you If you start looking at these moves from that aspect, then probably I think we are thinking far ahead of the way in which the government and the Reserve Bank is thinking. Okay, I, I, now, the, what yeah. led to all this kind of things, if I can take a minute and explain that, I think the recent geopolitical uh, situation that developed following the Russian-Ukraine uh, war actually drove home two truths. Mm -hmm. One is that I think that I have an international asset, but I suddenly find that I'm not able to utilize that asset because it gets frozen which is exactly what happened to the reserves of the Russian Central Bank. The second issue is that I think a private organization is a pure private organization that cannot be influenced because of geopolitical factors. That also was proved wrong because once the American sanctions came, 
the swift was not available for transactions with russia now these are the developments which the emerging markets and the other countries have been closely looking at yeah so today the steps that have been taken by the reserve bank of india gradually and even if you look at the look at the report that they are talking mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. what we are talking about is a process not an event so in that process we have now facilitated the rupee invoicing we have facilitated special wash for accounts we are prepared to open bilateral swap lines which china has been doing for last so many years okay. so these are all the process which have been started and after all if we have an ambition about rupee being an international currency please remember that people should start using the currency for trade transactions yeah. uh, and uh, that's exactly according to me what reserve bank of india and the government has facilitated got it uh, so actually you put the f- uh, first distinction on the table very well by saying that an international role of the rupee and invoicing exports and imports in rupee are two different things uh, international is a longer term goal and immediately invoicing some of our imports and exports in rupee rather than in dollar could be the first step which uh, the central bank and the government seem to be enabling i mean that's very good to know that this is the sequence uh, but uh, before that some uh, you know broader issues and uh, uh, professor paragaria thank you very much for joining and let me turn to you for that the uh, you know india is also becoming we are building tariffs and i think you pointed that out in one of our previous conversations we have also uh, started building a little bit of tariff warriors which uh, tariff walls which means less globalization there are other indications that india is not prepared to go the whole hog because we try to restrict the amount we depend on global debt uh, even uh, you know we, we don't want a sovereign dollar debt so do you think even mentally you're not quite prepared to go the whole hog as an international currency <laughs> well you know going international currency of course is a, 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 a very distant event yeah um before that happens you know we have to grow much larger mm-hmm. uh, and as you mentioned quite correctly on international trade front uh, we have to open much wider and uh, now you know uh, it, uh, as it is uh, our share in the global trade is about in merchandise trade is less than 2% in services somewhere closer to 4% but these are still very small shares now for comparison here uh, look at china which has about 13 to 14% share in merchandise exports uh services is also larger than us for sure uh and uh, uh, if you look at you know who is holding uh, yuan the chinese currency uh, as a part of its reserves uh, it's tiny you know there's only about 2% of the reserves currently are held by uh, in, in yuan mm-hmm. so uh, the, the the this goal is distant i think it is work in progress what we are doing is the right thing to do uh uh you know uh, uh, because they are a part of our own uh, evolution into a more global larger player uh, uh, on the global stage mm-hmm. but uh, uh, a lot of this thing you know a lot of internationalization of the rupee will happen as we grow bigger as we open up the economy uh, also there are issues of capital account convertibility and so forth so uh, these are processes that will go hand in hand uh and as our uh, weight in the uh, global economy rises uh, inevitably good things will happen uh, as an example for uh, you know the, the chinese yuan was included in the sdr basket yes uh, and that is something you know we can aspire to in in some in, in the near future but trade wise we have to grow much bigger for that to happen okay uh well uh, uh, professor paragari i'm going to come back to you to even speak about the disadvantages because if the currency is used everywhere uh, it will also mean perhaps uh, less control over our own monetary policy but i'll come to that in a minute let me get first thoughts from himant mishra as well who has also in a way been there done that uh, himant uh, do you see reluctance on the part of uh, counterparties say importers Uh, uh, from india or uh, even exporters into india hesitating to take the rupee because we are almost a deficit with most countries what will they do if we pay them for their imports in rupees uh, uh, do they have enough use for it so will there be a natural resistance uh, good evening lata so it's always a pleasure to be on your show uh, so to your to your query i think the timing could not have been better 
and in some ways it builds on what uh, Dr. Panagriya and uh, Mr. Padmanabhan have said. So we, we don't have to uh, go all hawk. Mm. Uh, I think that the, the, the times have changed. I think nobody talks about, uh, you know, you making extreme measures or becoming capital account convertible for you to have a globalized currency. I think, uh, you know, as, as the IDG report by the Reserve Bank of India very uh, neatly articulates, uh, internationalizing the currency is, is a process and not an event. It's an evolutionary step. It's a process that the RBI... Uh, uh, kind of uh, started some time ago in a very measured and calibrated manner, uh, focusing on the trade account. Uh, and, and I would actually say, you know, uh, I mean, they did uh, the Masala bond, which was pretty much a capital account relaxation, but will progressively move towards the capital account as well. But I see this as uh, a process and uh, serving the uh, larger economic development of the country and not being uh, uh, a means in itself. My importers and exporters in the past uh, uh, have reacted with caution uh, for the reason that particularly people who will be long uh, in our assets, uh, you know, for an exporter who is uh, an overseas exporter who is uh, selling goods into India, if he is going to receive his receivable in rupee assets, which uh, as Mr. Padmanabhan rightly mentioned was always seen as uh, a secularly uh, declining asset. And as you would know, uh, no exporter, no capital provider wants to be sitting long, uh, a diminishing asset. So there, there has been that resistance, uh, but uh, you know there are there are three mega trends that are happening at this point in time, and which is why I think the timing is very important. The first is uh, the move to uh, multipolarity. Uh, you know, you, everybody recognizes that we're moving away from a unipolar to a multipolar world, uh, and which is why people want alternatives uh, and the INR. Uh, I mean, let's be real, it's not going to become uh, a very credible alternative in the near future, uh, but but as I mentioned, it's a long-term uh, process. Uh, the second is, uh, what was China plus one becoming an alternative to China? I mean, I increasingly see that I was on, I was on a roadshow in New York City, and I attended an event in Singapore. Normally, when I would talk to investors, uh, you know, while, while our team is largely Indian, you would always get more queries on China and Southeast Asia. Mm. Uh, I've seen a tangible shift. Uh, people wanting uh, to know more about India. And the conversation is not about why India. It's about how India. Uh, how do we invest into India? How do we manage the risk? And this in some ways is going to be uh, uh, an integral part of that particular solution. But the third bit is very important. Uh, for a long time, uh, you know, the, the Indian macro has not been as robust as it has been now. Uh, you know, we, we've had an international currency free uh, uh, pre, uh, independence for a short period of time. We had it in the uh, UAE uh, post independence as well. We've had the rupee uh, traded uh, among some of our SAR countries. Uh, so I would think, uh, you know, this is potentially the best time, uh, but, but we've got to be real. Uh, things are not going to change all of a sudden. Uh, it, it, it's going to be a measured uh, uh, and a calibrated approach, even amongst the uh, investing community and the invoicing community. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, music to a, uh, an Indian's ears that there are more conversations and questions about India. Uh, in fact, uh, we were speaking with the IFMR, the uh, guys who track global funds, and uh, they are noticing a lot of uh, India-dedicated funds coming in. Otherwise, we were only receiving GEM funds or generally the uh, emerging market funds. Now, specific India-dedicated flows are increasing exponentially. Uh, but Mr. Panagaria, you know, before I come to the how, uh, which uh, both uh, uh, you and Mr. Padmanabhan and uh, actually even Hemant has uh, I've already touched a bit, I wanted to ask you whether, uh, you know, are we putting the horse before the cart? Should we even aim for too much of an international role? As Heyman says, we are still seen as a de secularly depreciating currency. And we would like to be, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, last 10 weeks, both the dollar and the yuan have been falling and the RBI is working extra hard to continue to sell dollars to ensure that the rupee does not appreciate. So, considering that we actually want to uh, support the Indian economy, both uh, protect from imports and encourage exports by keeping the rupee depreciated, you think this is a secondary goal, making the rupee uh, international currency. The first is using the currency to bolster ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, uh, internationalization is a sort of byproduct. That's how I see it. Uh, only thing, you know, which has made it urgent is, as Mr. Padmanabhan said, uh, the, the freezing of the Russian assets uh, 
uh, dollar assets and the, the uh, denial of access to the SWIFT system. That is what has really triggered this. But otherwise, you know, uh, uh, evidently we have to run our macro properly. We have to run our exchange rate correctly. Um, uh, these goals really uh, take precedence over uh, almost any other, uh, 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 as far as the currency issues are concerned. Uh, so the internationalization certainly is not going to drive our policies. It is our policies which will drive our internationali internationalization. And there are a few things that we can proactively do without r risking anything on the macro side uh, otherwise. I mean, things like, you know, the kind of arrangements that uh, India is trying to forge with Malaysia or with uh, Nepal or, uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, uh, payments that uh, uh, were uh, done uh, with Russian trade uh, on oil in rupees. Uh, these, you know, bilateral rupee, uh, uh, even if we could multilateralize that, you know, their payments union kind of arrangements that have existed in Europe before, uh, soon after the Second World War and all. So those sorts of arrangements can be done, but that really doesn't impact any of our other uh, uh, macro uh, uh, policies. Uh, uh, and, and that is the right way to proceed. You know, we personally, you know, meaning we for India, uh, we are not under any sort of uh, risk of uh, our dollar assets being frozen or yes. our uh, uh, access to SWIFT being denied. I mean, that's an extremely, extremely low pro prob probability event uh, simply because, you know, our relations are actually uh, not only very good with uh, both, both Europe and the United States, but they are on a very rapidly kind of uh, climbing, uh, uh, yeah. uh, rapidly rising uh, uh, trajectory. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, that risk is simply not there. Uh, uh, that also shouldn't really drive us in, in, in any serious way. Uh, but uh, as long as, you know, some of these arrangements can be made uh, uh, to, to do some clearing of their rupee payments, uh, okay. that also is on a limited scale. You can't do on a large scale. One thing we can do, of course, is, you know, uh, agree to accept all payments uh, 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 for our exports or anything we sell abroad mm. in rupees. You know, anybody who wants to make those payments in rupees, we shouldn't have no objections to do, to do that. Okay. Uh, that might give a little bit of fillip uh, uh, to, to, okay. to the user. Yeah. So chances are, chances are, sir, actually chances are the uh, the RBI was at least uh, until a few months back wanting to actually accumulate the reserves that it lost in 2022. So you know RBI was equally keen that we accepted dollars. As you say, uh, it is not the first goal now to make a, a rupee a global country. The first goal is really growth and macros and uh, internationalization will happen in its own good time. But I do want the steps that we have to take in the short and the medium term to also allow the rupee to become a global currency. Those questions after the break, we are back in a jiffy. Welcome back to this special conversation on how much should we make the rupee global and if yes, how much, what steps should we take to make it global? That's the conversation we are having with Professor Arvind Panagaria, the Professor of Economics at Columbia University, Mr. G. Padmanabhan, former Executive Director at RBI, and Hemant Mishra, the co-founder and CEO of Scoop Capital. Gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, uh, Mr. Padmanabhan, uh, I think we were agreed before we went into the break that uh, our first concentration will be on other things like, you know, growth and macros. And internationalization will happen in its own time. What would you recommend as immediate steps that India can take? Look, if you are talking about internationalization, obviously, the, see, there are two, three advantages of whatever steps Reserve Bank has done, and it has done in a very coordinated manner, which we need to appreciate. One is, one thing which, which could be the outcome if this takes off is that there could be reduction in transaction cost. Mm. There could be better transparency as far as, and this has to be seen in the uh, link with the CBDC, mm. uh, you know, the uh, uh, the kind of uh, efforts are happening. Mm. Because to me, my mind, as far as at least this country is concerned, the CBDC is going to have the maximum impact as far as the cross-border transactions are concerned in terms of, you know, bringing down the cost of transaction, the speed of transactions, etc. Yeah. So the transaction cost is one thing that is going to definitely reduce. The second thing, on account of this invoicing and the central banks having the swap lines, what we need to understand is something similar to, although the, it was not a great success, the ACU, we are actually netting dollars. The use of dollars is reducing. So 
definitely that's a step forward as far as reducing the use of dollars is concerned maybe it is not complete internationalization but we are making sure that the use of dollar is concentrated okay, uh, reduced mr padmana mr padmana one minute mr padmana one minute i think i'm confusing you all by constantly saying internationalizing uh, maybe i should just say that how much more can be used the rupee for cross border transactions what steps can we take no already the steps that we are taking we are taking two important steps one is for the trade the other is to, uh, to for the p to pay payments okay and these are the important steps that need to be taken mm. can be taken under the current stage of convertibility okay. unless we talk about the capital account being liberalized further and then talk about more internationalization uh, for transactions so the first two steps are the steps the right steps taken given the kind of convertibility stage we are in as okay. of now okay uh, uh, hemant uh, you know there are uh, uh, people who obviously look at india as having too many problems even opening a non resident account for non resident transactions so do you think some of those steps uh, need to be taken just nuts and bolts so so what do you think should be done i mean uh, you know uh, at the cost of uh, sounding uh, non popular uh, india continues to be a complex place to do business uh, but, but you know but that that kind of beyond the agenda of this particular discussion uh, you know the, the three things that are needed for for one to even start thinking about internationalizing or globalizing the currency is a uh, obviously a strong macro uh, conditions for the country uh, you know you don't want to go ahead and uh open yourself to whatever little rest because it comes it's a double edged sword in some ways uh and the report does talk about it uh, so you want to do it when uh, you are at your strongest and you want to do it from a position of strength which obviously works well for india the second is obviously uh, it needs to translate uh, into uh, tangible benefits uh, whether it's transaction cost or incremental flows whether on the trade or on the uh, capital account and that will only happen if people uh, uh, lay trust in the uh, regulatory framework uh, uh, in terms of enforceability of contract and what not so that again works very well for india uh, and i'm drawing a distinction between india and for that matter china which yeah. i look at and track uh, pretty closely and the third is uh, uh, you know a deep and vibrant uh, domestic financial uh, markets because you know some of the residual uh, flows will eventually uh, get back uh, get invested back into the domestic yeah. markets so these three preconditions are already there okay. now now what are the few things that need to be done and i would break them under in, in three buckets right uh, you know the short term uh, the 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 medium term and the long term i think the short term i think we've got to do more of the same some of the bilateral arrangements that we've got uh, with some of the countries and okay. uh, we spoke about malaysia there's one with the uae uh, you know uh, extending the upi network uh, i mean it was a delight for me when uh, singapore became a signatory to it uh, so so some of this uh, should be done and this is very important for us because you know we've got a very skewed payment profile on the trade on the trade side i mean we obviously run a trade deficit Uh, you know but uh, we've got uh, you know oil import bill that comes from the middle east while our exports come in predominantly from uh, the us and uh, yeah. europe and predominantly services so we'll have to get that mix uh, right otherwise we'll have a situation yeah. like we had with you know haven you know india has a problem i have uh, unfortunately I, i get your point haven i'm unfortunately out of time i have to get uh, last one one minute of thoughts from uh, dr panagaria uh, do you think sir we have to persist with this at least the noise of uh, rupee as uh, uh, a, a global invoicing currency simply because of the geopolitics i see no harm in that lata uh, i think we should certainly do that mm. uh, but uh, ultimately to get there uh, the only developing country that i see which is closest to 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 being in internationally uh, uh, mm. there uh, is china yes. and and that is where i see you know we really need to open up in a much bigger way mm -hmm. uh, our heft in international trade has to rise significantly uh, compared to where we are today Uh, and and keep doing that you know do sign the free trade agreements and uh, uh, with various countries become the one in the china plus one uh, equation yes. uh, uh, and and i think the rest will follow okay. so so that is my sort of recommendation which is good for the economy which is also good for the rupee to become uh, an internationalized asset okay so that is uh, extremely well put thank you very much uh, dr panagaria Uh, Mr Padmanabhan and Hemant Thau for joining in this conversation so let's do the big thing by becoming more and more involved in global trade 
by biting off a larger chunk of global trade by signing FTAs and maybe even this currency swap agreements, uh, the global role of the rupee will come in its own time. On that note, we wrap up on this edition of Indianomics. Thank you for watching.